This is going to be a quick comparison of the TI Inspire CX CAS and the TI Inspire CX2 CAS. The TI Inspire CX CAS version 1 on the left came out back in 2011, and the second version, the TI Inspire CX2 CAS on the right, came out in the summer of 2019. Despite there being an almost 8 year time gap between the release of these two calculators, not much has changed. In terms of physical appearance, these two calculators look almost exactly the same. The version 2 just has an updated color scheme. The two main differences between these two calculators are 1, the version 2 has a faster processor, and 2, the version 2 also has a few software updates and refreshes. I'm going to start off by doing a couple speed tests comparing the version 1 to the version 2 since that is going to be the main difference between these two calculators. The first test I'll start off with is the boot up test. I'm just going to flip these two calculators over and hit the reset button and see how long it takes for each of them to be fully booted up and ready to go. So here we go. And they are off. Already on the right there, the version 2 is ready to go in 13 seconds. And the version 1 is still working on that first loading screen. And once it finishes with that loading screen, it goes on to the next loading screen. Finally, after a whopping 46 seconds, the version 1 of the TI Inspire CX CAS is ready to use. So that's a pretty big time difference, but obviously keep in mind that you're not going to be booting these calculators up from zero every time you use them. That just happens obviously when you reset the calculators, like I did in this demonstration, and if they've been off for a while and you turn them back on, you're going to have to wait that amount of time until you're able to use them. Next up is a graphing speed test, and I'm going to be graphing the function sine of x squared. That function has a lot of points in a very small window, so we're going to see how these do. And here we go. So I did, even though it was off camera, I did hit the enter buttons at the exact same time. And obviously the version 2 graphed it a little bit quicker, but they were both pretty fast. Graphing time is not really going to be an issue with either of these calculators. Next I'm just going to use this feature that the Inspire has. You can kind of pan around on the graph kind of like you would do on Google Maps or something. And as you can see each time you move the screen around the calculator has to redraw the line and neither one is very smooth using this feature but the version 2 does feel a little bit more responsive although neither, like I said, neither is very great. Okay, and the last speed test I'm going to be doing is pure internal computation. Nothing really complicated to display on the screen. Uh, I'm going to be adding the sum from 1 to 30,000 of e to the 1 over x. So here we go. And the version 2 has it after 6.4 seconds. And then a few seconds later, the version 1 has finished in 14.4 seconds. So that's another pretty big relative time gap between these two calculators. But waiting 14 seconds is not that big of a deal. You're not going to be summing this many numbers that often realistically. Both of these calculators will do pretty well for heavy computation tasks like that. For hardware, that's pretty much it. You just saw it. The new color scheme and a slightly faster processor. So next up I'm going to be talking about the changes that were made on the software side of things. But on the software side of things, once again, not much has changed. In terms of overall functionality and what each calculator can do, it's basically exactly the same between version 1 and version 2. The main differences are that the version 2 of the software has a few sort of refreshes that make 
the interface look a lot more modern and clean. And then also there's a few things that I won't really mention in this video too much, but there's been a few improvements to the graphing. You can add multiple labels to tick marks and very small things like that, but nothing that would drastically improve the, the functionality of the calculator. So this new software for the Inspire, it's uh, the version 5 of the Inspire handheld software. But the thing is, is that you can't install the version 5 software on the first version of the Inspire. So if you want the new software, you have to get the new calculator. First of all, as you can see, the, the user interface in general just looks a lot more clean and modern. The icons are a lot simpler. The menus are a lot cleaner. And that's really about it. And this next thing is kind of a small change, but I think it makes a pretty significant difference for anyone that's using the calculator. Right here is the calculation screen. That's where you're gonna be doing most of the stuff on this calculator. On the version one, you can see they kind of have the whole thing in this little window that's popped up in the screen. And on the version two, the scratch pad screen takes up the entire screen. So there's not that little tiny space there between the actual edge of the screen and the window that you're doing work in. So they totally got rid of that and now any app that you open will take up the entire screen instead of being in this little window thing that sort of just crops everything in and doesn't allow you to take full advantage of the entire screen, which there isn't much of in the first place. So if you're thinking about buying a TI Inspire CX CAS version one or version two, just keep in mind that there's not much difference between the two versions. And my suggestion would be just to go on Amazon or wherever you're going to buy your calculator. And although prices do fluctuate, it's possible that the version 1 could be more expensive than the version 2. Obviously, if they were the same price, you would prefer to have the version 2. But say if there was like a $20 price difference between the two, it wouldn't be the end of the world just to get the version 1 and save $20. And you wouldn't be missing out on much. That's it. Hopefully you found this video useful, and if you want to see more videos about calculators for some reason, you can always subscribe.